Good afternoon, everyone watching this video. Um, I'm going to guess that you are a student of linear algebra, and this video is made for you to discuss Markov chains and time reversibility, which is an interesting concept. So you know a little bit about what a Markov chain is. It's a system with multiple states and the probability of ending up in a particular state depends on our current state. We can make a transition matrix for a particular Markov chain, um, and the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this transition matrix tell us the long-term behavior. The dominant eigenvector of a transition matrix for a Markov chain is associated with the dominant eigenvalue, which is always 1. So here's an example. If we took a random walk through this system with states 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, um, let's say we start at state 1, we have a 50% chance of ending up in state 2 in the next time step and a 50% chance of ending up in state 3. But 1 doesn't loop back on itself and it's not connected to state 4 or 5. So for the first row of our transition matrix, we have 0, 1 half, 1 half, 0, 0. And each row of the transition matrix represents being in a particular state, and the probabilities are linked to the probability that you travel from your current state to your next state, whatever that may be. So your probabilities in your rows always add to 1 because you have to be somewhere in the next state. So it's probability one that you end up somewhere. We can also talk about the stationary distribution of a Markov matrix, which is represented by the lowercase pi. Um, and it's a row vector whose probabilities add to one. And it will not change when it's multiplied by your Markov transition matrix. So on this slide, the lowercase pi, the row vector, multiplied by our transition matrix P will yield the lowercase pi, our stationary distribution row vector. Um, no matter how many steps you take through your simulation, your stationary distribution will remain the same. So this formula that we have for finding the stationary distribution of a random walk, the di over the sum of all of the dj, just means that your number of degrees, your, the number of degrees for a particular state is the number of links that that state has. So 1 has 2 links. It's linked to state 2 and state 3. So it has a degree of 2. And state 2 has 3 links. It's linked to 1, 3, and 4. So it has a degree of 3. Your bottom, your denominator of your stationary distribution value is twice the number of total links in the system. So there are 6 lines connecting our 5 states, and 2 times 6 is 12. So our stationary distribution for state 1, or pi sub 1, is the number of degrees of the state, which is 2, over 2 times the total number of links in the system, which is 12. Um, and that's how we calculated the stationary distribution of our random walk. Um, a little bit more about the stationary distribution. It's also called the invariant distribution, and they're both represented by lowercase pi. It's the probability distribution that remains unchanged in the Markov chain as time progresses. Pi sub i is the eigenvalue of the state i and the long-run fraction of the time spent at that state. Um, so the long-run fraction of the time spent at that state, let's see if that makes sense. That means in this random walk, we spend 2 twelfths of our time at state 1, 2 twelfths at state 4, and 2 twelfths at state 5. And 
that adds to 6 twelfths, which is about half our time. And then we also spend 3 twelfths at state 2 and 3 twelfths at state 3. So we spend a little bit more time at states 2 and 3 proportionally to 1, 4, and 5 as individual states. Um, but we spend half our total time at states 1, 4, and 5 altogether, and half our time at 2 and 3 altogether. Um, anyway, the stationary distribution doesn't change no matter how many times we multiply it by our transition matrix P. So this formula might look a little familiar. It's similar to how we find eigenvectors and eigenvalues um, because the stationary distribution vector pi is the eigenvector whose eigenvalue is 1. Um, so pi times transition matrix P is equal to pi times 1. Um, and pi is generally a row vector and the probabilities in pi will sum to 1. So reverse time, the other part of this um, video, means that if you run a simulation of your random walk that we've been taking in this video, um, you won't be able to tell if your simulation is running forwards or backwards just by watching it um, because the stationary distribution is balanced around zero. Um, it's just as likely that as long as you're spending a little bit more time at states two and three, it's just as likely you're going in forward time as it is you are going in reverse time. So you can't tell what direction in time you're going, but what if you're not watching a simulation? How can you do a calculation to know if your Markov chain is reversible? Well, um, one way to know is with this formula. If pi sub i of p of transition matrix p with ij is equal to the pi of j whose transition matrix is ji, if that formula is true for all i and j, then the Markov chain is reversible. Um, and our random walk is reversible. I believe all random walks are reversible when they are finite and non-absorbing and nice like ours was. Um, what does this mean for us? Well, random walks are always time reversible. In this particular one, we spend a little bit more time at states two and three. Um, we could have seen that with the dominant eigenvector. And you probably run into this more often than you think, especially if you build circuits, because if you think about our random walk as a mesh of wires with a voltage running through them, and each of our states are different nodes, you can use this concept for um, voltage calculations in your circuits class. Um, some websites that I had a lot of fun with that I really wanted to share with the class um, are these interactive resources. So um, you please visit these, especially if you want a more visical, visible graphical um, explanation of eigenvectors and eigenvalues and also of Markov chains. These top two are really simple, fun online websites, and the third one is um, a Jupyter notebook with Python code about Markov chains. Um, here is my work cited, and I hope you enjoyed the video.